let's just begin. I know that inducerin and interferon, the combination has created a great functional cure. Can you tell us what is the long-term durability of this functional cure that is observed in the trial? So let, let me give you a little bit of history on the trial itself, and then I can, I can explain that. So the trial that you're speaking about is called IMPROVE-1. It's a combination of inducerin plus interferon, as you mentioned, uh, in patients who are E-antigen negative and suppressed on a nucleoside, which is standard of care therapy. So what we did was we looked at four different regimens, looking at a reduction in surface antigen uh, with our inducer and product, which is what it's meant to do, uh, and then coming in with interferon for either 24 weeks or 12 weeks with either continued inducer and dosing or no inducer and dosing during the interferon period. And once they got to the end of their interferon treatment period, we stopped the interferon. We dosed them for another 24 weeks with just their nucleoside. And when they got to the end of that period, we stopped them completely. So they were off all therapy at that point. And we followed them up for 24 weeks. And that's the definition of functional cure. So the definition of functional cure from a regulatory perspective is undetectable HPV DNA, surface antigen loss or surface antigen less than the lower limit of quantification based on the assay that's available, which is less than 0.05 international units per mil, with or without hepatitis B surface antigen antibodies for 24 weeks off of all therapy. So they can't be taking their nucleoside, they can't be taking anything. And what we found was that we got a really nice number of patients to maintain their functional cure based on that definition. In the best performing cohort, the cohort that got continued inducerin dosing with 24 weeks of interferon, at the functional cure time point, we got 25% of patients overall to functional cure. And more importantly, if you looked at patients with baseline surface antigen, less than 1,000 international units per mil, that number went to 50%, which is a really impressive number. Um, it's, it's one of the best in the field for sure. Hepatitis B affects so many people globally, um, but even if you take a slice of that, it's meaningful. And if you can, if you can deliver a functional cure in you know, one of two patients, mm -hmm. that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And can you tell us what factors may influence which patients are more likely to achieve this functional cure? In this study, we took E antigen negative patients who were chronically suppressed on a nucleoside analog. And when we looked at the sort of the factors that contributed to them achieving functional cure, what we found was the main factor that sort of contributed uh, most Im importantly was surface antigen at baseline. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that if you looked at uh, patients with surface antigen less than 1,000 at baseline, um, their probability of getting to this functional cure time point was substantially higher than patients who had a surface antigen at level at baseline that was greater than 1,000. And how does Industrian compare to other RNAi therapies that are in development for HPV in terms of immune activation and overall efficacy? Yeah, that, great question. So there are several siRNA compounds in development for hepatitis B uh, across the field. And historically, there's been an opinion that they're all kind of kind of one and the same. If you have an siRNA, it's an siRNA. I think we're finally seeing some differentiation here uh, with our product inducerin relative to the competition. And what we've seen historically is that you do see immune activation when you dose with inducerin alone. And that has been continued in the combination trials that we've seen during that lead-in period with inducerin. You do see some T-cell activation and some priming of the immune system such that when you come in with an immunomodulator down the line, you see this, this effect that is at this time leading to, to functional cure. So there are, there are definitely differences in the siRNAs with regards to structure and modifications that are made to the, to the siRNA sequence. And the GAUNAC display is different. That's, that's the targeting mechanism to get it to, the, to hepatocytes in the liver. So the totality of those differences may be contributing to, to differences that we're seeing in the outcomes. And can you tell us what are the next steps for our Buddhist. So our goal is to move this uh, into later stage development as quickly as possible. We still have ongoing discussions uh, internally. And of course, we're going to have to have discussions with regulators before we decide on what the next steps are. But our goal here really is to maximize the functional cure rate that we're seeing uh, with an inducer and based regimen and to bring that forward to patients as quickly as we can.